order. You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man. It's been a turbulent few months for the independent inquiry into child sexual abuse. It's seen the resignations of a third chairwoman and its top lawyer. The circumstances surrounding the departure of both figures remains hazy, to say the least. But tonight, Newsnight can reveal that the inquiry faces its potentially most challenging criticism yet. That it was aware of an allegation that a leading figure on the inquiry had sexually assaulted a colleague but was allowed to resign without an investigation. Jake Morrison has this exclusive report. The independent inquiry into child sexual abuse was set up to investigate claims that a raft of institutions, from police to the BBC, had swept very serious allegations under the carpet for decades. The departure of the inquiry's third chair, Dame Lau Goddard, who denies making a series of racist remarks, has left senior politicians having to fend off charges that they too have swept away serious claims. There were stories around about the inquiry and about individuals related to the inquiry, but the Home Secretary cannot intervene on the basis of suspicion, rumour or hearsay. <laughs> Now, however, the inquiry faces questions about a potentially even more serious allegation. Newsnight has learned of a claim that a senior figure on the inquiry sexually assaulted a colleague. It seems an investigation into that senior figure's behaviour has been quietly shelved. He resigned but is working from home for two months on a handover document to his successor. In that time, the inquiry will pay him around £55,000. It's a charge that goes to the heart of what responsibility an organisation has to act over suspicion of wrongdoing. Even in cases like this one, where it appears the alleged victim did not want to make an official complaint. The incident at the centre of this story is alleged to have taken place here, in the inquiry's headquarters in central London. One afternoon in early September, two colleagues, one male, one female, enter Millbank Tower and take the lift from the reception to the inquiry offices on the 23rd floor. Inside that lift, the man allegedly pushes the woman against the side of the lift and gropes her between the legs. That same day, the alleged victim gave an account of the incident. Newsnight understands that in late September, inquiry chair Alexis J and her panel became aware of it. At the time, they had serious concerns over the conduct of this man, Ben Emerson, Deputy High Court Judge, 2016 Barrister of the Year, and the most senior barrister on the entire child sex abuse inquiry. Now, he had been named in the account of the alleged sexual assault. At the time, the circumstances around Lau Goddard's departure were putting the inquiry under intense scrutiny. Newsnight understands that while the panel were aware of the disclosure, the victim did not want to make a formal complaint. On Wednesday, September 28th, the trouble at the top of the inquiry spilt into the open. The Times reported Mr Emerson was considering quitting as lead counsel. That evening, Ben Emerson was suspended. Inquiry Chair Professor Alexis Jay said... The inquiry has recently become very concerned about aspects of Mr Emerson's leadership of the council team. He has therefore been suspended from duty so that these can be properly investigated. Mr Emerson said the first he knew of his suspension was when he was contacted by the media. Just over 24 hours later, more news from the inquiry. Ben Emerson QC, the most senior lawyer working for the independent inquiry into historical child sexual abuse in England and Wales, has resigned. At first glance, it looked like the inquiry had got its way and that whatever problems there may have been with Mr Emerson would be no longer. Their jointly released comments suggested the tension of the previous night had been forgotten. Mr Emerson said in his letter, It has become clear to me that I am not the person to take this review forward on your behalf. It is now time for someone else to take the helm with a different leadership of the council team. No reference was made to his suspension. 24 hours after suspending Mr Emerson, Professor Jay gave a tribute. She said, He has made an enormous contribution to the inquiry and we wish him well.
Furthermore, she endorsed his reasoning for his departure. Mr Emerson has stepped down at this time because he considers that after two and a half years at the helm, it is now time for someone else to take the role forward and provide leadership for the council team. Again, there was no reference to Mr Emerson's suspension or any concerns about his leadership and no suggestion that any investigation continues. Why was Mr Emerson suspended? And I asked that question. Mr Emerson is being paid £1,700 a day by the inquiry until the end of November. In terms of what actually happened, the inquiry won't say. I cannot discuss anything to do with Mr Emerson's circumstances. The problem for the inquiry is that it all looks a bit too convenient. The handling of the departure of the inquiry's third chair in August appears similar. Lau Goddard was, we were led to believe, homesick. But reports in the Times newspaper painted a picture of complete dysfunction with her at the helm and even claims of racism. Again, the inquiry says the details are private. Newsnight has spoken to someone close to the inquiry who paints a picture of a broken institution, one so dysfunctional that if people did need to raise concerns, the workplace culture made it impossible for them to do so. The source describes Mr Emerson's departure as the kind of cover-up that the inquiry should be uncovering. And they say that until the inquiry can confront the reality of what has happened inside it, it will struggle to investigate others. In his testimony... The allegation of sexual assault is, of course, unproven. Newsnight has only named Mr Emerson because it would be impossible to tell this story otherwise. A legal representative for Mr Emerson said his client denied any claim of wrongdoing. The Child Abuse Inquiry said... As to the reasons for Ben Emerson QC's departure from the inquiry, we are not commenting beyond the statements issued on 29th of September 2016. Nothing should be read into this. All organisations treat HR matters confidentially. Newsnight has contacted the alleged victim of the sexual assault. Her lawyers refused to comment. Nobody ever imagined that the official inquiry into child sexual abuse would have to deal with a disclosure of alleged assault involving its own workers. Handling such sensitive allegations, particularly when the alleged victim does not want matters taken further, can leave any organisation struggling to balance competing duties. But some believe that by allowing Mr Emerson to step down without a proper investigation, the inquiry has left itself exposed to the claim it behaves no differently to those it seeks to pass judgment on. Jake Morris reporting. Mr Emerson's lawyers told us tonight Mr Emerson categorically denies any allegation of sexual assault or bullying or other misconduct at the inquiry. Any such allegations are completely false. Well, shortly before coming on air, I spoke to the Labour MP, Lisa Nandy, who has previously raised questions about the inquiry. I asked her where this latest development leaves the inquiry. Well, it's the latest and probably the most serious to date in a series of allegations that have emerged into the public domain in recent week. But the allegations date back not just over recent months, but quite some considerable time. And they paint a picture of an inquiry that was set up in order to shine a spotlight on institutions that had become characterised by uh, denial, secrecy and cover-up taking on some of those very characteristics itself. I think these latest allegations raise serious questions of confidence for survivors. And if this inquiry is to succeed, which it must, then it must proceed on a completely different basis based on transparency and openness and the ability of people who raise concerns to be heard. But to be fair to the inquiry, as we have reported, the alleged victim did not want this investigated. So did the inquiry really do anything wrong? Well, it seems to me inconceivable, given the scale of the dysfunction that has now been revealed in the inquiry over several months and the seriousness of these allegations, that there were not a number of people who were working on or connected to the inquiry who were aware of those allegations. And it seems to me that the Home Office as the sponsoring body has very serious questions to answer as to the level of oversight of this inquiry. It's on its fourth chair in two years. They've lost five senior legal counsel during that time as well. And as well as being of profound importance to the country, there are also huge questions of public money 
involved in these decisions. You, you talked about uh, the confidence of survivors and victims. So do you think the whole thing needs reconstituted and start again? Well, a new chair has been appointed and that is extremely welcome. But going forwards, what the inquiry needs is real transparency, real openness, a willingness to hear when problems occur and treat people properly and support them to be able to blow the whistle and make sure those concerns are acted on. And what we've got here is a series of allegations about uh, very, very serious goings on in this inquiry that don't appear to have been acted upon by ministers over a very long period of time, these just being the latest. Some of the individuals who are concerned in these allegations are still being paid by the inquiry using public money. And that's why we need ministers and the Prime Minister to come clean about what they knew, why no action has been taken, and to constitute the inquiry on a different basis going forwards. Lisa and Nandy, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.